Hi, Alan Schimmel, DevOps.com, here at the DevOps Enterprise Summit. And my guest is Jeffrey Snover of Microsoft, who's about to uh, go up on stage and deliver his session. Good That's morning, right. Jeff. Howdy. How are you? I'm doing great. I'm having a blast at this show. It is. It, well, it's a good show to have a blast at. Jeff, for our viewers who uh, aren't lucky enough to be here, what, what are you presenting on today? Oh, so my talk's called The Cultural Battle to Remove Windows from Windows Server. Okay. <laughs> and then the subtitle is My 15 or 16 Year Journey to Ship Nano Server. <laughs> Great. So the, basically the context is, imagine, you know, we're, Microsoft's like a 70 plus billion dollar a year business. And, and, and Steve Ballmer once described Windows as the most successful business in the history of the world, mm -hmm. as Windows, Windows, Windows. And then I come in and I say, that's great, but we got to get rid of those Windows okay. for the data center. Right, what well, we so can do to make this better is get rid of Windows. That, <laughs> You know, if that, in the old days, that would have gotten you beheaded in Redmond, I think. That close. That close. Demoted. Demoted, at I least. I did. Yeah. I tell that story. Yep. Well, well, let's not go there. Um, but, and, and so what, what's the premise here? Why, why no Windows? Oh, so basically it's for, we don't love Windows. Windows are great. Windows make you incredibly powerful and, and productive. But the story is, uh, you don't want the Windows on the server itself. Like if you have a small, medium business, yes, put the GUI on the server. Love it, love it, love it. Yeah. Other than that, for a big data center, tens, hundreds, thousands, hundreds of thousands. In the case of Microsoft, we have more than that. I won't say how many. But there, what you want to do is you want to put the GUI on the client, and then you want the server to be as small and lean as possible. So you want minimal resource consumption, you want minimal patching, you want minimal security footprint. You want only the components that you use. And so that's what's so exciting is now Windows Server 2016 produces something we call Nano Server. It's a deployment <laughs> option and it's, it's 20 times smaller wow. than Windows Server with a desktop. That that is impressive. It's I all this, so this yeah. is nano server. Nano server. And it's all designed with a DevOps mindset, right? We want to be small, we want to be manageable. We put our desired state configuration platform as part of the core tenant. Mm -hmm. We have a PowerShell package manager, the ability to find software anywhere and, and deploy it. That's fantastic. A unit test framework integrated into the operating system. So really, this is the, this release is so important. It really lays the architectural groundwork for a DevOps-enabled operating system, really for the next 25 years. Fantastic. That, that's I had no idea. Yeah. I'm very impressed. Jeff, and obviously DevOps is important to Microsoft. Absolutely. Beyond Nano Server, where else are we, where else are we seeing DevOps kind of making a a mark or or changing the way Microsoft's looking at things? Sure. Well, you see it in Azure, of course. Yeah. Yes, and then also in Visual Studio. So we've been I've, I've been working closely with both those teams to make mm -hmm. sure we have aligned plans. Uh, Visual Studio now supports PowerShell, so you can do your PowerShell work in Visual Studio. Uh, it supports release management pipelines. Mm -hmm. And then of course Azure has all the, the DevOps tooling. Yes. We have Azure Automation, which now supports desired state configuration. When you set up a VM, you know in the past you'd set up a VM and then it's like, click, 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 and you customize it. Now what you can do is you can set up a VM and you can say, I would like to uh, have the following desired state configuration apply. And whether that's Windows or Linux, wow. that's the other big story. Right. You know, Microsoft, the no, sea no, refuses no yeah. river. We right. love Linux, we <laughs> love Windows. I, I, we want to be the best place to run your workload, workload. whatever that workload is. Unless you know, it's a mainframe. It's, it, well, even mainframes can run Linux, but <laughs> well, the... You know, I was reading, there was an article recently in Wired, something about something by the cloud, companies that were blanked by the cloud. Yeah, I read that one, that and was awesome. <laughs> pretty good. And they, uh, you know, they mentioned that Microsoft was not one of those companies. That's right. Because of Azure, because of how you embrace the yep. cloud, because of the way you guys are doing things around DevOps and, and adopting that whole sort of mentality. Uh, and, and it's refreshing, someone my age, <laughs> you know, it, I, I grew up in the in the arrogant 80s and 90s where, you know, I remember a Microsoft employee telling me when NT first came out, uh -huh. which gives you an idea of how long I've been around, that he said, look, it's not as good as Linux now. 
or Sun. It actually wasn't Linux. It was uh, Solaris. Sun? Yeah. He said it's not as good as Solaris now, but wait till about NT three or four. We'll kill it. And he was right, by the way. By yeah. the time NT, I don't know, it wasn't called NT three or four, but by the third iteration of NT, that's right. It had crushed anything in the market. Well, it had best met customers' needs. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> no, that's really the focus. I, you know, a lot of people like to make it as this like combat, but that's really not it. It's really no, it, what do it our customers dominant. need? Yes, yes. Because and because customers needed it, yeah. but. Um, but it's so refreshing to see Microsoft so embracing and... and well, you know, our new leader, he's just okay, awesome. It's yeah. the real deal. You know, yeah. sometimes you see these, you know, public personas, and then you wonder, well, you know, what happens when the, the lights go off and the cameras are off? And the answer is, it's the same guy. Same guy. And the message is very, very clear. I mean, I, all the engineers at Microsoft are just thrilled with this guy. And why are they thrilled with him? Because what he says is, hey, do what your customers need. Pay, you know, make your customers successful, make sure they use our products, make sure they love them, make sure they're successful with our products. And then he says, don't worry about monetization. We got smart guys that can figure that out. Yeah. If you can make people you use our products, us, that's great. and as engineers, that's what matters to us, right? We work hard and then we want to change the and world. It's so empowering and it makes you want to, it makes you want to work there. Yeah, exactly. And that's, that's fantastic. Let me shift gears a little yep. with you, Jeff. This is, uh, you've been here now a few days. What yeah. do you think of Does? Oh, I love those. This is quickly becoming one of my favorite conferences. You know, yeah. uh, many of the people out here are my customers. All of them are my tribe. Good. You know? And that is, it's about tribe. It really is. Absolutely. And you have these fantastic conversations about, hey, what are the, you know, okay, we hear these stories, you know, start small, expand on success, et cetera. But what did you really do? You know, how did that work? And, oh, yeah, there was this guy. Oh, I know that guy. I got one of those yep. guys at my work. And, well, what were the strategies you used? So the real world stories about how to take these principles and then apply them and scale. And I got to tell you, I was talking to Gene Kim last night about this. And I said, well, what's wonderful is, is the, um, um, uh, sort of, I don't know how to describe it, but sort of the rejuvenation. You know, a lot of the people here are people who a few years ago were just doing their job. They're coming in, they do their job, and they go home, and that's it. And now, these people are alive. I yeah. mean, they have discovered something, they have figured out how to, and, you know, they've got this renewed enthusiasm about their job. They know how to make changes in their job, see those changes have an effect, uh, help other people to be successful, help their customers succeed, help their business succeed, and then, you know, a bunch of people this year, they said, oh, last year my job title was this. This year my job title is that. Tough. So they are, are getting They're rewarded for that it. too. But it's just that spirit of aliveness of people who is like, yeah, it's no longer a job. People are on a mission. And that's my favorite that's part about exciting. the conference. Yeah. Absolutely. Well, Jeff, I think we're going to wrap up okay. here because we're about out of time. Listen, I'm sure your, your presentation is going to be amazing. Um, love what I'm hearing about Microsoft and, and what you guys are doing, and we'd love to hear more in the future. Best of luck, and thanks for coming in today. Thank you. That's great. Alan Schimmel for DevOps.com.